Public Sponsored Radio donates their airwaves, providing live coverage of Clearwater's Great Hudson River Revival to their local New York listeners and surfers of the World Wide Web. I hope people listening certainly will support Clearwater because it's a wonderful thing and also support WBAI. It's a good investment for you and your children and your parents and great parents' sanity exercise our precious First Amendment rights. Smile, she makes you smile. Cindy looks beautiful. She's brown and white and has speckled ears. And she and her kids are very friendly. I, uh, I've, I've met some unfriendly goats. This is, yeah, uh, yeah. and I guess anybody who comes up here can meet her. That's right. That's uh, right. The activist area at the Hudson River Revival. Uh, you come up to Croton Point Park. Mm -hmm. uh, the best way to get here is by mass transit at the Croton Harmon Station, and there's a free <laughs> shuttle bus that'll take you from the station right to the festival with uh, six stages of music and activist galore. Andy and Point is 34 miles from Times Square, and it would be great if more people in the city really knew um, how dangerous it is to have a nuclear power plant as a neighbor. And it's an old plant, and what would what the people who run the plant the multi-billion dollar multinational corporation would like to do is from out of town it. i should add oh from <laughs> <laughs> talk about globalization there it's the same company that ran out on new orleans and threatened to uh, not provide electricity to new orleans unless they got a multi-million dollar settlement from the government um, all connected all connected all connected anyway they want this plant for another 20 to go for another 20 years they make two million dollars a day so that's basically why they want to do it and their profit is our expense. Uh, well, it's certainly <laughs> it's certainly not. They're not doing it for public health and safety. That's for sure. So, so the relicensing. The relicensing is they've asked for relicensing, and there is a process, a very long, long process that the Nuclear Regulatory Committee go, Commission goes through, and basically they'll only look at aging equipment, and a little bit about the environment. And the meeting um, last Wednesday was for them to tell us how wonderful they think the aging equipment is. And sure, it can go for another 20 years. No problem, because they're so much on top of things. Now, of course, they did not mention the fact that um, back in March, a photographer at the behest of the company came into the control room with a digital camera. And because of the RF frequency in the camera, Close down the nuclear power plant. Oh no! <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> this is a matter of record. The nuclear power plant was closed down, and the camera didn't even have to be on. By the way, you have something new every year. <laughs> <laughs> the coal-fired generator there is—it's uh, 1,344 megawatts using coal to generate yeah. nuclear power, which is why it's not greenhouse gas-free. Yeah. <laughs> Got these postcards circulating. We need to do the best we can to convince them that we are all interested in shutting them down. Certainly needs to know that there are a lot of us out there that yeah. uh, are very disappointed with yeah. with his uh, not taking a position on this. Right. And we, and we feel that the only position he can take, if he's honest, is, is, the, is to close the, have the call for the shutdown of the plant. I think legal power to uh, shut it down so I need a postcard that's going to be sent to the government to check it out. Well, put together the slogan, Water Not Weapons. And uh, we're, we're, we're all visualizing that it will be as big as Make Love Not War. Because it's the message that has to come out now. The world needs to know that our attention, our resources, our money, our energy has to be towards clean water, not war. Not war. I'm the education director of Clearwater, and I'm also a board member of an organization called Rocking the Boat. Rocking the Boat, Bronx-based boat building organization. Uh, what it does is it gets uh, teenagers together from different communities in New York City, especially the Bronx, and um, Rocking the Boat teaches these kids how to build boats, 
how to build community, how to look at the waterways around them and in their cities and, and see what's going on. It's, uh, it's a really great organization that, that enriches a lot of kids' lives. They built a whole fleet of, of, of rowboats, around 14 to 18 feet long, and they take them out on the Bronx River. Working with kids now that they have built a boat, like there's two programs, boat building and uh, habitat monitoring. So after they build the boats, we have a second set of kids from different high schools in the Bronx, and we go out in the Bronx River and do water monitoring and habitat monitoring. We have a chance to let them know that uh, all the restoration that has been done at the Bronx River has been done by teenagers. So it's a skill that they learn and they don't even realize that they're actually learning carpentry skills, math, science, some sort of ecology going, biology, chemistry for that matter. When once some of their teachers at their school find out, oh, you're with Rocking the Boat, you didn't tell me you did that after school program, mm -hmm. and then, they're, then the teachers start to get involved, so then the school starts getting involved, and then they start helping us recruit the recognition from a lot of the high schools in the city. So we're actually able to make arrangements with the school so that they can have either an elective credit, a math credit, or a science credit. But one of the greatest aspects of Rockin' the Boat is it allows these kids to come together to sort of lean on each other for strength, to learn from each other, and to build these beautiful boats. Then we go to uh, Bronx River and we study the water. And um, it's very interesting. We learn a lot of things. And I know how to build a boat now. <laughs> Hudson River to sail in the clear water. My sister went through the trip, the one week trip. We go up to Pete Seegers, we get some wood, we uh, bend them, we steam them. Yeah, he lets us chop down his, tree, his trees. Very nice of him, actually. Just start. Take the whole thing over and then put it through the, the flat soap. Start on the heel, start on the ribs. And there we go. After a while, we got one of these. We we'll roll them in the Bronx River, and uh, we go on little trips here and there. So they, we know they float. We know they work. <laughs> it's great. It's uh, it's something that you don't get to do a lot when you're in the Bronx. Um, no one really knows that there's actually water around our area. There's actually greenery around the city, which a lot of inner city kids don't even notice. With our club, also County friends, um, you know, for years people have been wanting to get some kind of a, involve the, the youth of Kingston right. to, um, you know, to get them out on the water. We've got a small sailboat, but right. we've never done that. Right. This organization is definitely an inspiration. Hopefully, maybe I can learn something from them. And yeah. I have to get off my butt right. to do something. That's, that's, that's the big ingredient. We are going to make a major statement about how to educate young people to create a better world. How many people are up for creating a center for environmental justice and leadership? I am asking everybody here to volunteer to help us rebuild this center. To sign up at the membership of our next generation is prepared to take leadership at the highest level as a national model like we did when we built the sloop. 40 years ago. And we turned to the arts and we turned to the environment. And when I was down at the river, I saw Pete in the sloop and I said, I'm going to commit myself to making a difference. I believed it would be cleaned up. We've talked about this, Pete and I. It was about cleaning it up. It still is about cleaning it up. But the next step is we have to create the momentum and energy to include everyone on the river. That includes all of our cities up and down this river.